Okay, I'm Sovereign Sage, and we are going to be covering Matsunaga. Like I've been saying for a while, I've been meaning to get back to some of these, and I need to try to start doing these a little quicker. The only reason why it takes a while is you need to get a character to almost level 50 before all of their abilities become available, or and or unlocked. And some of the characters I want to do, like Ieyasu and Kojiro, they're like low, low level. It's so pathetic. So, I think I'm going to try spending time working on these to get these out a little faster. So, enough of that narrative. We're going to be showing off some of his moves since I finally have everything unlocked. All I was lacking was his third R2 Homurai, which I have now. Not important. So, we're going to be covering his basic moves. But for, for foremost and foremost, um, his character image phrase, in English, it is divinely self-important. And in Japanese, it is Tenga Dokusan. And his Giga Basura title is Spider. And his Giga Basura, uh, Basura artwork image is a deadly looking spider in a web. He, his seiyu, voice actor, is Keiji Fujiwara. I don't know who he is. <laughs> Sounds great. So, for Giga Basra, looks like this. <laughs> and then it says, divinely self-important on Matsunaga's image. So what's cool about this, though, is it can put him into Homerai mode. So as you can see, the edges of the screen are on fire. I do not have his personal inscription, which allows that to stay permanently. And it's like a permanent effect where that does stay on the screen the whole time you are playing as him. You just have flames on the screen if you want to feel like you have some kind of devil may cry medieval nonsense to have constant flames on the screen. I don't see that as um, distracting or bothering, but some people might find it distracting to constantly have flames on the screen as if though you're currently being burned alive. But it doesn't bother me any. I don't have it though. I can get it to show you what it looks like after this, if you are interested. So, um, his weapon is a treasured sword and gunpowder. So the funny thing about him is he fights with the sword he has, but the sword that he has on his hip is considered his family heirloom or treasure. And he does not actually fight with that second sword. Um, the sword that he has on his hip there, he never draws that sword and never fights with it. He just carries it with him at all times because it's his family treasure. And he feels like if I leave it behind, it'll get stolen or whatever. Um, so that's what that is. He does not actually fight with that weapon. When some people look at his design, they might think, oh, he fights with two swords or he's like Kojiro and he draws his second sword rarely. No, he never draws that sword at all. He's not like Kojiro where you can occasionally draw two swords uh, for certain attacks. He never draws that. It's just kind of there for show, really. So as for his personal inscription, though, it's called uh, Blazing Treasure. Um, so basically, he starts in Homerai mode, which is what you were seeing there. That's why I did that, so I could show it to you. And it does not cancel. Of course, you can cancel it if you have the personal inscription on his weapon. All you got to do is reuse his third R2. And it'll cancel it. It was the same as it was with Casca and some other characters. Uh, a lot of their uh, skill revisions or personal personal inscriptions, rather, sorry, personal inscriptions are some kind of a rendition of one of their R2s that allows it to last longer. And it is cancelable by AKA activating it again. So as for his basic attacks, though, so if you go to hold square, that's what the kanji next to the square button says. It's hold. Because each character has an attack where you hold the square and where you do not. Each character has an eight string combo with the square button. And it kind of, his is like this. You gotta hit it eight different times. So if there was a person in front of him when, when he did that last one, it would have set them on fire. Like exploded them in a way. As you can see there. Um, so you can also get it to activate by holding it. So it's called a uh, Koku. Uh, so like K-O-K-U-U -U, because Ku doesn't sound very but it's two U's um, it's called Empty Skies unfortunately some of these moves I cannot show uh, enemies do have to be in front of you but I usually try to show them anyways just like you can hold it 
looked at that last one there. That's also at the end of his 8-string combo, which is what I was talking about. A lot of characters hold square attacks are actually at the end of their combos. Not all characters, but for some, their hold squares can be at the end of an 8-string combo. It's like a finisher, but you can activate it early by aka holding square. On to his basic triangle, though. So it's called World Devouring Flames, or Goka. So, if you just stand still and push it, eat. Yeah. Perfect. Wonderful. Amazing. So if we go to forward triangle, direction plus triangle, it's called Soundless, or Muhibiki. So he, he really does... He's like, Whoa! I do it all the time. You can actually, like, if you run forward and, and push square, a triangle. He dashes forward for like a split second. Like, it's fun. It's fun to mess around with. So his R1 is a sublination or sublination. Sometimes I say things a little fast and you can't tell what I'm saying, but it's sublination and it's called Shoka. So this is uh, actually activatable in midair, I found out. So a lot of characters R1s can be activated in midair. So if you jump and then do it, it kind of goes around him as here, it doesn't, it goes around him and then goes in front of him. However, in midair, it goes around him and then it ends. That's how it's different. Woo! I'm a sick fire master. I'm always faster. Aha. I really do like it. It's fun. I, I, I have fun messing with that one all the time because it's cool. Um, so his L1 plus triangle is called Burial Furnace, or Soro. I know it's not Soro, it's S-O-U-R-O, Soro. Um, so Soro. Um, so, yeah! That one's also usable in midair. So his L1 plus triangle you can use in midair, as seen here. Like that. Or like this on the ground. Or like this in midair. It's fun. Very fun, very fun, fun stuff. All right, um, on to his um, R2s. Well, his skill revision, I don't really know what you would call it. Um, that's the little red kanji underneath the L1 plus triangle, L1 plus square. That's his skill revision. I think it's like, if you hold it, it changes. So if you just push it once, it's quick. But if you hold it, he holds it longer and then sets it on fire. So that one changes based on if you hold it or not. Because if you just push it, it's quick. It's quick. And then if you hold it, he kind of does like this long drug out then fire. So his is different based on if you hold those. So um, on to his um, R2s. I think I still have them in, in order. Sometimes people like to give me crap over these because... I usually don't use, put the R2s in order. I put them in order based on the ones I like the most. And then when I do videos like this and I show what those are, people are like, that's not the first one you get first. I don't care. I'm not here to cover these in order. I'm just here to cover the moves. Doesn't matter what order you get them in. So as for this one here, these ones I believe are in order for anyone who cares. Um, his one here is called Dust Concealment, or Chiri Sugumori. So this one I do all the time because it's funny. Um, basically what he does is he walks up to an enemy, and he grabs them by the neck, and he lifts them into the air, and then explodes them. They get gunpowder all over them. When he, when he grabs them, he douses them in uh, gunpowder. Then he grabs them by the neck and lifts them up, and then sets it on fire. He explodes it. And you can use it twice on a main character and it'll kill him. Depending, even if you're playing on harder difficulties like Heaven, I've been known to insta-kill characters with this move. It can be quite overpowering at times, though it does vary. Um, and it's one I use all the time. I can't unfortunately show it because I'm not near an enemy. But he douses them because when he goes to reach for them, he, he has like powder in his hands already. So when he goes to reach for them, it's like... <sighs> yeah. I'll show that though, I will. Um, his second one, a uh, Black Catastrophe, also known as Kuro, because black, black is Kuro, like Kuro Neko, Neko is cat, that's why I, I always know that one. I do know the colors in Japanese, like Aoi is blue, so forth and so on. So, and Shiro is white, but Kuro is black, so it's Kuro Magatsu, Catastrophe Magatsu. 
It kind of sounds like a name of a freaking uh, persona. <laughs> oh my god. He's an Agi, was it? No, it was... So there was another one called Magatsu. Um, I think it was... Um, oh, what's his face? I got his face in my mind and I forget his name. He kind of reminded me of Madai. Um, not important. Basically, this is what this one looks like. Man. Did you hear the sound on that? I don't know if you can hear that, but it has like this weird sound effect where it's like... Like, oh my god. Alright, and then the final one for him... Oh yeah, his name is Toru Adachi, duh. He has a persona that's called Magatsu, like Ten Gen Magatsu or some shit. Um, anyway, so his third one is called Homurai Blaze Border. So, Homurai. Oh yeah, boy. Give me those sweet, sick flames all over my body. What? Okay, so this is what this looks like. So this is what Homurai is, and the bottom of the screen will constantly stay on fire like this. It, it fades after a while, but like I said, if you have his personal inscription on a weapon, that lasts forever. Um, some people might find that annoying though, because you constantly have flames on the screen. That, like I said, that never really bothers me. But I can put his personal inscription on a weapon and then start a stage to show you that it's permanently there. So now we're going to show off some of these moves. So. The, his first RR2, Dust Concealment, or Chiri Sugimori, we're going to use it on Sakon, hopefully, so you can see what it looks like, because I can't really show it either way. And then I believe his, uh, was it Muhibiki? Um, no. It was one of his other ones. I think it was a square attack. I couldn't show that one either. No. <laughs> so it looks like this. And then hold square. Mitsunari. <laughs> 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 Hanbei's like, how dare you beat my subordinate? <laughs> 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 Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> We're gonna try to see if we can glitch to, uh, uh, the Hanbei Elven. I used to be a water warrior like you. <laughs> Solo boss star looks like this. Oh, yeah. He isn't actually here, but it's okay. Oh, talk sweet to me. Whisper a bunch of sweet nothings in my ear. So, okay. So basically, that is all of his main attacks. All of his main abilities. He also has a taunt that looks like this. That's also his standing pose when you go to select him. Um, he stands and looks at his sword like that. Like this. Like I said, he is really one of my favorite characters. He's really fun to use. Um, I do like a lot of his abilities. <laughs> Oh, 
there, there's really nothing negative I can say about him as a character, really. Um, he's just one of my favorite characters. And he's not really bad at all, either. I liked him because I first met him in Utage. That's where he, I think he first debuted was in Utage. Ah, trying to glitch out is hard. Well, maybe if I put my back to the wall. Yeah, of course. So basically, like I was saying, um, I'm a rooftop leap master. Anyway, um, that's where I first met him, I believe, was in Utage. I have videos on Utage. I like this water of reflection. It's so great. I have videos on Utage if you want to see me use him there. But his attacks are pretty much the same, except for some things have changed with this game. There are some abilities that you could not use in midair that you can now. And that's pretty much what I like about it, Mitsunari. Wait a damn minute, please. So basically, there are some attacks that you can use here in midair that you could not before, including in the English versions of these games. I'm, I'm not sure about um, Sengoku Basura 2 or some of the other ones that I got, but like Heroes, I think they had one. Samurai Heroes is another one on the PS3 that I also have, but that was supposed to be Sengoku Basura 3, when they brought it over to the West, they just changed the name of the game. And they didn't really advertise it correctly when they remade it with English. They even hired AAA voice actors like Liam O'Brien, who plays Ieyasu, Laura Bailey, who plays Oichi, and um, what's his name? Troy Baker, who does Mitsunari. So they hired AAA voice actors for that game. But they advertised it so poorly that when it came out, people thought it was just like a stupid samurai game. Nobody really cared about it. Um, and they just advertised it poorly, and it didn't really do well over here, which is why they did not bring this game, along with some other ones. They didn't bring them over to the West. They didn't even bother to have them translated because they were not advertised too well, and they were losing out on money, and they didn't want to put all kinds of money to have these games even having English subtitles they didn't need to redub everything uh, but they didn't even want to do that either so it kind of sucks but his moves I'm pretty sure are the same I haven't played Utage in a while I think I have close to 400 hours in it and I actually haven't played it in a very very long time but I do have videos where I have played as him there and all of his abilities are the same except for the exception of being able to use R1 in midair and his L1 plus triangle in midair. So a lot of these characters, they can use their R1s as well as their L1 plus triangles, even their skill revisions in most instances, where you can use those in midair and originally before you could not. Some characters can get other abilities to launch. Um, but it depends on what it is. I know that Surahime's Naita Isen, where she uses the arrows, uh, I think it's her L1 plus triangle where she flips backwards and pulls pulls the bow with her her whole body weight and then lets it go. That one, it says you can use it in midair. I've actually done a moveset already covering her and you cannot. She does the flip at least, the back flip, but she doesn't actually pull off the move and use it. It's impossible. So there are some abilities and moves with these characters you kind of have to experience around and mess around with yourself. But majority of them, they are usable in midair. Don't let anybody tell you that they are not. They are. This is his R1. At one push triangle. Then he comes down with a slash. Yeah, so those are the only ones he can use in midair. When it comes to R2s though, he cannot use any of his in midair that I know of. I just tried to use one there and it did not work. Because some characters, um, some characters R2s, depending on what they are, can be used in midair. Um, that's very rare. In most instances, characters R2s cannot. I must be thinking of Kotaro's R1 where he throws a shuriken. Uh, in, in them which case, never mind. But as far as I know, R1s and L1 plus triangles can be used in midair. They can. Um, and I actually like that a lot. Um, that it makes some of these characters more funner to use because their abilities can be used in midair. I'm inside this tree. Um, for one thing, too, like I've already covered Oichi, I believe, but her R1 you could use in midair and you can use it to like make her fly. 
and in previous games you couldn't even use Oichi's R1 it was really slow and you would have to wait for her to land on the ground before you could use it again and a lot of people were really mad about that and that's why they put her down and say she's a slow character that she was better when she used to fight with her Niginata Naginata um, I like her either way it does not bother me at all so basically that's everything I can say for him his attacks are really simple and basic there's really nothing like no hidden abilities or nothing um, that's basically everything I can show you for him as of right now um, he is a fun character though um, but I'm, I can go put his personal inscription on one of his weapons really quick to show you um, what they look like as for his weapons I do not have all of them I think his default weapon is Tatsuka no Surugi and then we have Haka Serutachi, uh, Futsu no Metama, Aruchi no Aramasa, uh, Chakagoshu, Catch Fire and Burn Strong. That's like his joke weapon. I think it's a, it's like one of those e-lighters, though that you often use to light um, like burners and uh, what do you call it, a uh, grills that you use to light grills. One of those cigarette lighter thingies. I don't have it unfortunately. And then he has two of his other weapons, so Tatsuka no Surugi Unsigned, and then Tatsuka no Surugi Gold. I believe I'm using one of his default weapons. I don't know if this is Tatsuka no Surugi, or I think it actually might be Futsu no Mitama. But we can go look at that. We can go look at that. Now, the one I'm using here... um. I'm not sure if it has the- yeah, this is his default weapon. This is Tatsuka no Surugi. Um, reason why I'm wielding his default is I- at the time I didn't really have a chance to get any stronger weapons for him. So I could not show that off. This one is Aruchi no Aramasa. So I'm probably going to be switching to this weapon from now on. Um, because I, I really do like the design. It also looks like that dragon's engulfing his freaking uh, arm. It's actually supposed to be a serpent because Aruchi is a snake in folklore. But it um, looks like a dragon anyway. But uh, I might switch him to this one. I don't know for sure if I really will or not. I can't really say. And this one here um, is Futsu no Mitama. Yeah. So this one here kind of looks like he's maybe from like British or something. Style of that weapon looks like it could be from Britain. Something like that. Um, this one here. Let me look at the kanji. I think this one is Haka Sarutachi. So I could also switch over to this one too. It looks like all. It kind of looks like a Samurai Warrior Kenshin Usugi sword in a way. Because he has a sword that looks like that, with blades jagging off the sides. It, that's exactly what it reminds me of. It looks like Kenshin's blade from Samurai Warriors. But um, I might switch to this one too. But it all depends on once I get these weapons leveled up. Depends on how strong they really are after they're completely maxed. And then this one here is also his default. Uh, this one is Tatsuka no Surugi Unsigned. It even has a red tint to it. So you can tell it's different from his default. It looks like it's been burned. It's like black and reddish, almost like a sepia-ish color. Compared to his default, that's like a strong white and black. You can see the difference there. I show you again. See, it's more red and black. And then we go to like white and black. And then the hilt turns gold. And here the hilt is like black and sepia-ish. So I'm only wielding his default weapon currently. Um, I don't have his other joke weapon. I am missing several of his weapons already. Uh, I, I think I'm missing three. So I'm missing, um, let's see, I think I'm missing uh, Chakugoshu, which is Catch Fire and Burn Strong, and then Tatsuka no Surugi Gold, um, as far as what I'm missing. I think I'm missing three still. Yeah, I'm missing uh, his Gold version, and then his Joke Weapon, and one of the other ones, because I have... Yeah, I think I'm missing, um, no, because this one is Futsu no Matama. Yeah, I think I have them all. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, he only has seven. So yeah, those are the only two I'm missing. His joke weapon and then the gold version of his weapon. 
As for KG, I have all of KG's. Um, so those are the only two I'm missing for him, unfortunately. And then all of his weapon, his outfits, this is his default look. Um, and then this is his alternate outfit. This outfit is in locked in game if you complete any one of his stories. Rather, if it's drama or Sengoku creation, you will unlock this outfit. This one here is his Tanka Metal outfit. Uh, it's like elegant something, elegant version. Um, that's the one I use. I, I like this one better. Um, uh, blue is my favorite color, that's probably why. So, um, He looks good. Looks good. From here, in this one, he kind of looks like some kind of a prince from like Persia or Egypt or some shit. Even though it has, um, he got Bona Lilies all over it, so that makes no sense. But uh, those are a lot of his outfits, majority of the weapons. Um, as for his personal inscription for Homerai, I don't really know um, what I want to put that on, actually. Um, so these two, sometimes they get random weapons that appear. Maybe not tonight, but let's see. I don't know why I said tonight, it's one in the evening. Uh, so his personal inscription, that's going to cost quite a bit. I can also buy him a limit break. Cause unfortunately, I don't know what I want to put that on. Cause right now, I'm only using his default weapon. Though I am going to be switching to another weapon. I think I can put his personal inscription maybe on this weapon here. I just don't know how I really feel about that. To put his personal inscription on the Hakuset or Tachi because... I don't know if I'm really going to use this weapon much. I don't even know how strong it would be. So what we'll do here is I'll equip that really quick. So I have his personal inscription. Fortunately, I don't have his element. His element is fire and it would cause his weapon to glow. I haven't come across it to put it on there yet, unfortunately. So that's why I, I, it's not there. So let me go ahead and start this again so you can see that with the personal inscription he has the flames constantly at the bottom of the screen. Hmm. He's like, hmm, is that so? Tsoka. Like, or, yo, look at that. Hmm. Yeah. Give me a second. Okay, I, I like to listen to Hanbei talk, but come on. Oh my god. So basically, this is what it looks like. You have the flames constantly on the screen. Uh, does it actually really infect, affect anything? I don't really know for sure. Um, except for he has flames, so... Some characters, uh, personal inscriptions, what's funny about them is if you do not have a character's element on a weapon, like I don't have his, sometimes you can get lucky and their personal inscriptions give the, the element to them. So they'll have their element that accompanies all of their attacks. So his is fire. So when I swing, you can see the fire. Fire for days. Uh -huh. So I think Homerai adds fire uh, element to his weapon, where he num normally wouldn't have it. But then again, even if you did have it, I don't think it would really make a difference at that point. Um, it just gives him fire to all of his attacks. You can see when I'm swinging the sword, there's just fire slashes in midair, so that's what it does. And you, again, you can cancel it by activating it again, see now it's gone. But if I activate it, then it remains because I have his personal inscription. So you can cancel those if you want to. Because some of them you would need to cancel. Like Masamune's, for instance. Masamune's personal inscription puts him in war dance per like permanently. He has all six swords drawn. The only bad thing about that, though, he may do extra damage, but he cannot guard anything. And you will get hit a lot more often. So there are some characters' personal inscriptions that you would want to cancel depending on what it is and depending on what it does. Yeah, so it just adds fire. Because I have uh, KG's element. I don't know why KG's is glowing red even though it's supposed to be wind and in most cases it glows uh, 
supposed to go green. I think it's the weapon I have for KG. Because when I swim with KG, there's no wind. See how there's no wind? But yet, for Matsunaga, he gets his element. You can see the fire. So that's cool. That's what I was saying. Each character is different. Some characters, their personal inscriptions actually give them what their element is. And it actually accompanies their attacks. Like it's Samurai Warriors or something. How you can add um, elements to your weapon and actually be able to see them. Uh, it's kind of like that. Um, but in some instances, the awesome characters, even if you have their personal inscription, it does not add their element to their attacks. However, Matsunaga is one of those characters that does get his element that accompanies his attacks. Um, that's basically what that looks like. And like I said, the flames are there constantly. Also the fire zone. So, that doesn't go away unless you cancel it. I don't think it bothers me at all having the flames at the bottom of the screen. It kind of looks neat. Like, I'm surrounded by fire. Some people might get annoyed with that and think it's very distracting. KG, what are you doing? Nani Ashtedu KG Sama. But anyway, I like it. Um, that's all I can really tell you about how close I am to his back. Um, that's about all I can tell you about Matsunaga. Um, he's not a character for everybody though, but he is, um, one of my favorite characters besides. That's everything I can really say. Um, if I unlock his joke weapon, if I find it anyway, not can't really unlock something I can't find, but if I find it, because I, ha I still have to go through his Sengoku creation route, I only ever did dr cover his drama, so hopefully when I do a playthrough through that soon, I will can find it there. And then I can do a video showing it off, because it's really funny. A lot of the joke weapons in this game are funny. For instance, KG's is like a calligraphy brush. So, like I said, some of the joke weapons are really funny. Some of them, some of them are anyway, not, maybe not all of them are not funny, but for the most part, they're funny. And like I said, KG's element is wind, but for every instance, it doesn't glow green like other characters that have wind elements, like Katsuige, for instance. He has wind element. Um, I can pull him up really quick. Hold on. KG's has wind, but it glows red. Um, somebody like Katsuye, as you can see here, you see how it glows green? His element is also wind, and it glows green. But, for instance, KG's is also wind, but it glows red, and I can't tell you why it does that. I, I, I don't know. Um, and Kenshin, somebody like Kenshin, you can't even see his element because it's ice, and he has lifestyle. Lifestyle is based on quick draws, so he, it's kind of like Mitsunari. They unsheathe and resheathe their sword like a million times. Um, so you never really get to see the element on his weapon unless you are doing an attack in which the blade is out and you get to see it. Otherwise, um, you would not. But Ice Element does look like hers. Um, like Tsuruhime. Like I said, every character's element is different. Hers kind of looks like little mists. So, she's also one of my other favorites. A lot of people criticize her and hate her too, but she's cute. If I was... I would adopt her. I, that sounds weird to say. Anyway, um, I like her a lot. She's really cute. Um, so that's really all I could say about that. Um, hopefully you learned a little about Matsunaga. Again, I have everything that I said in this video on his moves um, will be in the description as always for these videos. I always put those in the description and I have them translated in the description as well to help people. So if you ever want to know what a move is called, it's there. The only things I do not put in the description is the name of the weapons because it takes too long to put a different section to fill those out and I'm only allotted a certain amount of space in the description. So I don't actually put those. Those are the only things I do not put in the description is the name of the weapons. Though I could put them in a comment if somebody wanted to actually know what they were and wanted me to translate them. That's the only way I'll do it for you is if you ask me, can you, can you, um, can you please put the names of the weapons in English and in Japanese? I can give it to you in a comment. That's the only way I'll do it. That's only if you ask for it. Otherwise, I do not do that. Um, but again, um, thanks for watching if you did. I'm Sovereign Sage. The next character I will be covering will be Keiji. 
mainly because he's at 201 and I have not covered him yet and you would have think I would have by now so <laughs> don't know why I haven't I guess it just slipped my mind so we'll be doing KG next and I'm not sure who I'll do after him like I said there's a lot of characters I like in this game but their levels are incredibly low and in order for me to successfully cover a character's moveset um, they have to be at a certain level. Unfortunately, Kojiro is higher than I thought he was. <laughs> Literally. So, I might be doing him after Keiji as well. Um, I believe I have to get them close to level 40, almost level 50, like 45-ish, before you get all three of their R2s and stuff like that opened. Magoichi's not really one of my favorites, but she is at level 40, so I might cover her as well. I'm going to be covering majority of all characters that I like. Um... So I guess I can go ahead and save her right now in case people are wondering. I probably won't be covering characters like Hideyoshi or Shingen or Yoshitsugu or Tadakatsu Hideaki, even Kanbei, Sora, and Muneshige's um, Yoshihiro. Characters like that will not be covered until like the very, very end. They'll be like literally the last characters I cover. I'm only really focusing on characters that I like for right now. I probably won't even cover Yoshiaki either. Um, so, as you can see, the, the last character I have plans on covering is Nobunaga, as you can see here. Um, so he's the last character I have plans on doing, because before him, it's, um, it's Tenkai Mitsuhide, then Matabe, Shikanosuke, Yosh uh, Morochika, then Ashikaga, Matsu, Toshirie, Ireyasu, uh, Kotaro, Magoichi, now we're here at, see, we're here at, um, Matsunaga. I and mean, I've already done all the previous characters except for Kojiro. He just got pushed up ahead. That's why I said he's a little higher than I thought he would be. So I have my characters in order based on how I've covered them already. See, so all these previous characters, if you haven't seen my other videos, I have moose set covers on Hanbei, Tsuruhime, Kasuka, Katsuie, Kenshin, Oichi. Uh, except for Keiji, he's a little higher than he should be. He's not done yet. Um, Oichi... Sakon, Mitsunori, and two boys together. Uh, these two boys together. See what I did there? <laughs> See what I did? Uh, Masamune, Yukimura, Maria. Um, it's like almost like my middle name. Um, Narutora, and Nagamasa, Senorikyu. Again, Kojiro's higher than he should have been. Um, Sasuke, and then um, Sasuke and Motonari are the last two characters I covered. So you can see they're here. It actually went Motonari and then Sasuke, but... I, those are the last two characters I covered. That's why we moved to Matsunaga. So I do have these characters set up in order in the order I plan on doing them. So you can kind of see that here. Um, the only thing is different is, like I said, Kojiro was higher than he should have been. He should have been under here and he was not. So we'll be covering him next as well as Keiji because they're, they're higher up than they should be. So Keiji and Kojiro will be covered next. And then it looks like it might be going to Magoichi. I want to try to do Kotaro before her, though, because Kotaro is such a more better character, but um, we'll see what happens with that. But this is basically the order I have these characters set up to cover their moves, in case you want to know what I have plans on doing, or the next character you might be seeing. So, like I said, Hideyoshi is still high up there. He's literally under Nobunaga. And then it goes to Shingen and Yoshitsugu and so forth and so on. So these characters at the very, the ones above Hanbei here, are like literally the last characters I'm going to be covering. You probably will not even see them um, for a while. But um, that's what we have for now. And again, this was more focused on Masunaga, but I thought I'd go ahead and take a little more time to explain some other things as well. Because some people have been asking me, they've been coming to the videos and asking me if I'm, if I'm still doing guides. And I still am, it's just, as you can see there, I have a lot of characters, and I'm trying to get them all maxed out, and Kasuka's almost to where Hanbei and Surhime are, she just hasn't quite reached them yet. Um, and the other characters, it's just taking a very long time to take a character from level 1 to 999, and this is like the third time I'm having to do this since I have this game three times. I owned Vanilla 4 on my PS3, Samurai on my PS3, and now I have it again here, so I'm having to do this for a third time, and it's, it's just draining. The fact that I made this progress already two times prior to this, and here I am having to do it again, and it's like, oh, so it's taken a very long time. But this is the order I have these characters in, in which they will be shown. 
Um, but once I do all move set covers for these characters, I won't do any videos like this again for them. I, I will only do normal gameplay videos. I won't actually be telling people what moves are no more. Um, that's why I do these videos anyway, to help people know what the characters' moves are called in case they care to know. But in most instances, when people play these games, they don't really care what the moves are called. Um, well, maybe somebody does, but, um... That's all I can say for him as of right now, though. I will be doing his Sengoku creation route if you still want to see more gameplay of him and so forth and so on. But for right now, we're going to go cover KG. So, again, thanks for watching. If you did, I'm Sovereign Sage. And um, that's really all I can say for him. I don't know if other people like him, though. I do. So... Well, as where it comes to the Samurai Warriors series, um, some people were asking me if I liked him there. He is okay. I've never not liked Matsunaga. I even like him in Neo as well, where he's more older. Um, but I don't have anything negative to say about Matsunaga, really, no. I mean, he was strong enough to try to rebel against Nobunaga, who does that. <laughs> Everybody's like Mitsuhiri. Um, but anyway... I do like him both, but if I had to choose which Matsunaga I liked more, rather the Samurai Warriors or Sengoku Bastra, I'd, I would have to say the Sengoku Bastra Matsunaga is like a thousand times cooler. He doesn't have a fuckboy haircut and a spider web on his face. Just saying. Um, but he's, he's a lot more better here. He's more like threatening, like I'll kill you with gunpowder. Um, so... He's more threatening. A lot of his attacks are cooler and more fancier. And he's overall just more appealing in some ways. Um, the way he holds that sword, oh my god. Um, but anyway, that's all I can say for him. So, thanks for watching if you did. And if you want to see KG next, then I'll see you there.